The time for unparalleled hedonism has come to an end. Come! Now is the time to fight the decisive battle. The hostility of fresh blood, the insanity of a contest of wits. The class trial is finally raising its curtain. So meet up in front of Monokuma Rock. Once you're there, please proceed to the underground by taking the elevator located at the secret entrance. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Now then. <laughs> All right. There is no escape. Unbelievable. This is bad. Like... Show some spirit! This, too, must be the will of causality.
Marcel! Impossible! That is... No, no! You... Yeah! Like... Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person... I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh, no matter how many times I hear it, it's such a cruel rule. Now then, let's first discuss the motive. That masterpiece of gaming, Twilight Syndrome Murder Case. What? Who cares about that game? The outcome of this trial should be determined by whether or not we find Mahiru's killer. Nevertheless, we shouldn't ignore it. After all, that game is the motive this time. Yeah, you're right. Then let's try discussing that first. I'm sure everyone who's beaten the game already knows that it's based on an actual murder case. Some of us have not beaten that game. Give us a detailed explanation. It means Twilight Syndrome Murder Case is a non-fiction game. Additionally, some of us are characters in that game too. Some of us are characters in a video game? So, I think it's better if we clarify who the characters in the game are first. I see! Girl A is probably Mikan Sumiki. <laughs> that timid tone. That definitely sounds like Girl A. 
Based on the list of names in the staff role, I can't think of anyone else who would be girl A. Why am I in a video game? That's an infringement of my right to privacy! Ha! A nasty, trashy pig shit like you doesn't have any privacy rights! Ah, a nasty, trashy pig shit. I feel like I heard that in the game too. Huh? I see! Girl B was short and foul-mouthed. She's probably Hyoko. Short and foul-mouthed? That's like the complete opposite of me! Anyway, let's move on. Next is Girl C. I see! Girl C is Ibuki. Girl C? Then I'll see you next Tuesday! Let's move on to Girl D. I see! Girl D is my hero. The victim in this case. Yeah, that's correct. Let's skip Girl E and talk about Guy F. I see! Aren't you Guy F, Fuyuhiko? Huh. <laughs> I was in a game? <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Uh, that reminds me. Wasn't there another person whose last name was also Kuzuryu? Another person? It was one of the names on the staff roll. The names were Sumiki, Koizumi, Sayonji, Miyoda, Sato, Kuzuryu, and then another Kuzuryu. Hold on! Why do you keep saying there were two Kuzuryus? It's not like I'm wrong. That's how it's written on the staff roll. Since you beat the game, you probably know what this actually means, right? I can prove it with this! In the game, Guy F, Kuzuryu, mentions that he has a little sister. <laughs> hmm? What do you mean, little sister? This is what Guy F said in the game. It's pretty clear. There's no doubt that Guy F had a little sister. Plus, the sister actually appeared in the game. That's why the name Kuzuryu appeared twice. By the way, what role did Guy F's little sister, the other Kuzuryu, play? You probably noticed, right? I see! The dead high school girl who was the first victim in the game is the only person I can think of. Based on Guy F's tone in the game, it's clear that Girl E is not his little sister. So if the only person left is the dead high school girl, then she must be Fuyuhiko's sister. Why do you sound so fucking happy? That's a winning personality you've got there. Winning personality? Are you praising me? I was being sarcastic, dumbass! Hey, you said the game is a work of non-fiction. That means Fuyuhiko's little sister is... Yeah, I have a little sister. Something wrong with that? It's just a fucking game. Don't go mixing up some video game with reality. It's not just a game. It's definitely based on true events. That's why it's the motive. Don't go making shit up, bastard! If she was the type to die easily, I'd have fucking killed her myself a long time ago. I mean, when I first entered 
Hope Speak Academy. She, she was mouthing off to me, as usual, and sent me off. It happened just the other day. Um, about that, you're probably thinking like that because you've lost your memories. Shut the fuck up! You be quiet! I see. So you're never gonna accept that that game is based on true events, huh? Okay, I understand your attitude toward this class trial now. Nagito, you seem to be doubting Fuyuhiko a lot. Do you suspect he's the killer? A mystery that easy would make me feel sad. It wouldn't be good enough to serve as everyone's stepping stone. That's why. I'd be much happier if Fuyuhiko wasn't the killer. Okay, you're starting to act weird again. Anyway, now we've established who all the characters in the game are. Girl A is Mikan. Girl B is Hiyoko. Girl C is Ibuki. Girl D is Mahiru. Guy F is Fuyuhiko. And the first victim in the game that dead high school girl is Fuyuhiko's little sister. That's just a story in a fucking game. If so, then girl E is Miss Sato. Could it be? The same Miss Sato who likes white rice? I don't know what Sato you're talking about, but I don't think she's relevant to this case. Maybe it's related to Gundam's last name, since they're both really plain names. Tanaka may be an ordinary family name, but it's far better than Sato or Suzuki. Hey! No one cares about that! Hurry up and talk about the mystery of the game! Huh? What do you mean, mystery of the game? My, my, you don't know. I heard that girl E got killed. What? No way! Is that true? Getting killed is so violent, don't you know? My! Such awful times we live in! Why did this happen? You guys are definitely friends. So the mystery of the game is the murder of girl E, correct? Then let's hurry up and solve it! Let's first figure out why girl E was killed. See. The reason girl E was killed is because she killed the first victim in the game. Which means girl E was killed as revenge for the dead high school girl. What do you think, Fuyuhiko? Apparently girl E was killed to avenge your little sister. You're fucking persistent. I don't care what that game said at all. But... But... It... Is it... Is that true? Girl E, she... She killed the first victim? In order to make that clear, we need to know more about the case involving the first victim's murder. It's the murder that occurred in the music room. I knew it would come up, so I prepared in advance. Look, I made a map of the music room's surroundings which was the stage of the first case. I'm surprised you went to all this trouble. Mapping is second nature to retro game fans. Classic dungeon crawler RPGs have a first-person point of view, so mapping as you play is a basic. We get it! Let's talk about that later so we can focus on the case! Then, I'll start explaining. Girl A, Girl B, Girl C, and Girl D were at the entrance hall when they heard the sound of glass breaking. Immediately, they climbed the stairs to the second floor and headed to where they heard that sound. Girl E was in front of the music room on the second floor, and she confirmed that the sound came from in there. But the door to the music room was locked. So Girl D went to get the key from the office, and when the five of them were finally able to go inside, they found...
found the victim's body. Dead from a blow to the head. Because the music room's window was broken, the girls thought the killer escaped through there. The sound of breaking glass that they heard at the entrance hall seemed to confirm that. Plus, Girl E's school swimsuit was stolen, so they concluded that the escape killer was some pervert. How does that sound? Yep, an understandable explanation. Just as expected from the ultimate gamer who excels at clearing games. But it wasn't a pervert, right? Wasn't the real killer Girl E? Obviously. Girl E was waiting outside the music room for the other girls after she killed the first victim. Did she lock the music room from the outside? Then she would have totally needed the key from the office! Which means... Girlie was hiding that key. We can assume she used it to lock the music room after she left it. But... Girl D was the one who went to the office to get the key to the music room, right? By the way, since it was never mentioned in the game, we can exclude the possibility of there being a spare key. You can lock the music room from the inside, right? So from there, Girl E broke the window and escaped and sprinted to the front of the music room as fast as she could before the others arrived. She would have passed by the entrance hall where the other girls were waiting if she tried to do that. Then... forget this! It's not cute to see an old guy sulk. Hey! Is Girl E really the killer? We haven't reached an answer yet! After she killed the first victim in the music room, what did Girl E do? She just broke the window in the music room and escaped outside. So how did Girl E get from outside the school? To the front of the music room. To go back to the music room from outside, you need to go through the entrance hall. Plus, at the entrance hall, the other four girls should have been there. At the entrance hall, the girls... heard the sound of the window shut. No, that's wrong! First of all, the sound the girls heard wasn't the window breaking. If it wasn't the window, then what broke to make that sound? A vase. A vase? How low can you go? After the murder, a broken vase was discovered in the classroom next to the music room. So the sound of breaking glass that the four girls heard wasn't the music room's window. It was the sound of the vase breaking. Probably. Actually, the murder was nearly finished by the time the four girls met in the entrance hall. Girl E killed the victim in the music room, broke the window, and went to the office to get the key. With that key, she locked the music room from the hallway, returned the key to the office, and went back to wait in front of the music room. All she had to do was break the vase in the next door classroom as the four girls met by the entrance hall. To make them think the murder had just occurred and that the killer had just escaped. So, when the four of them ran over after they heard the sound, Girl E acted like she had just rushed over too. Wait a minute! The mystery hasn't been solved yet! You haven't determined what the murder weapon was yet! You can't! 
cares about the murder weapon? We found out who the killer was. Not cool. I went to all the trouble of making this death march, so you gotta stick with it to the end. What the heck? You're so annoying! Fine, let's figure out the weapon. If this keeps up, I'm gonna feel like I need to shit. Which means I'll feel disgusting! You're the disgusting one! <laughs> the weapon is pretty unconventional! The answer was revealed in the game, though. Now then, will you guys be able to figure it out? A weapon inside the music room, huh? What about broken glass? Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? Then she attacked her with the fish tank. That's too big to be a weapon. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? The investigation conducts universal chaos. It's on that big a scale, too? How about beating her with gravel instead? I agree with that! I got it! The killer must have used gravel to attack the victim. My goodness... I got it right! And I was just throwing things out there! <laughs> just as I thought! I'm chosen by the gods! You're not chosen at all! And gravel is impossible! It's too small to be a weapon! What if the gravel was put inside some sort of bag? A bag? What kind of bag? If the weapon is something that appeared in the game, then so is the bag. And the only thing I can think of is the school swimsuit. If you tie the swimsuit like a bag and stuff it full of gravel, it'd make an effective weapon. Gravel inside the swimsuit? Even the Ace Attorney would be astonished by such a fantastic idea! But for the killer, it's an idea that kills two birds with one stone. To make people think the killer is some pervert, it makes sense for a school swimsuit to be stolen. And if that swimsuit was used to make an improvised weapon, it'd have to be disposed of later. How about it, Monokuma? Are you satisfied now? This happiness you feel when the mystery you create is solved! Only producers know this feeling of ecstasy! But the real important talk begins now. Girl E had someone who can be called an accomplice. That person was actually... Girl D. Girl D. You're talking about Mahiru, right? Huh? Mahiru is the accomplice? What is this? What does that mean? The piece of face that became an important clue in the music room murder. Girl D got rid of it. And... Apparently, the reason Girl E committed murder in the first place was to protect Girl D. Girl D was being harassed by the victim. Girl E found out and tried to stop it. And they ended up getting into an argument. And she felt a rush of anger and ended up killing her. But she should have had a clear murderous intent. I mean, she choked her out and then bludgeoned her to death. She probably made her unconscious by accident. And from there, she couldn't go back. I, I, I somewhat understand that feeling. You can? That's pretty scary. But Girl E was also killed by someone on the fourth day. Or the game's last day. I might as well ask just in case. Who do you think killed Girl E? I 
C! It should have been Guy F. A scenario where Guy F murders Girl E out of a burning, hellfire desire to avenge his murdered sister! But... but Guy F is... What? It's just a story in a video game, isn't it? That's all you can say. If that game is telling the truth, it'd be a huge problem for you. Hey, clear this up for me. Those of you who appeared as characters in the game, do you remember this incident? That is... I'm terribly sorry, but... They don't remember! That's obvious! Because their school memories were like... Totally stolen! Even if I don't remember, I already know! It's obvious that guy is the killer! No one would kill a nice person like Mahiru besides a piece of shit menace to society like Fuyuhiko! Girl E and Mahiru were killed by that guy! You sure do talk a lot of shit. Well, I'm used to it by now. But does Mahiru's murder have anything to do with that game? Perhaps the two are unrelated. I can prove it with this! I'm not sure the two events are unrelated. At the very least, the killer has definitely played the game. As proof, Mahiru, who was killed in the beach house. And girl E, who was killed in the game, were both killed by a blow to the head with a metal bat. There's no way we can ignore that connection. Someone must have wanted to split her head open the exact same way they avenged the first victim. Hey, why don't you confess already? You're the one who killed Mahiru, right? You, you better cut that out right now! There is no way a stupid game could be the motive! You're dumb enough to believe that stupid game and that's why you killed her as revenge! If you keep making up your mind like that, we're just going to go around in circles. And... It's true, Fuyuhiko may look suspicious. But don't you think that'd be too obvious? What... What are you... I mean... There's a possibility that it's a trap set by the true killer. D trap What do you mean? The true killer played that game, and most likely found out about the relationships between the characters. That person could be using that knowledge to try to set up Fuyuhiko. Are you saying that a completely different killer murdered Mahiru and used the game motive as their cover? Isn't that what happened, Hyoko? Huh? Don't you understand? I'm saying you might be the true killer. <laughs> what is this? Like, I can only laugh. What are you even saying, you nasty toilet-clogging bitch? What are you saying, you four-eyed troll? Accusing me of killing Mahiru? <laughs> You're so mean! Why do you doubt Hyoko? Do you know where Hyoko was today? She was at the beach house, the scene of the crime. But I didn't go to the beach house! No, that's wrong! Wait a minute. You should have been at the beach house, Hyoko. Seriously, I told you I didn't! But these footprints in the sand in front of the beach house, aren't they yours? I don't have such ugly footprints! They're probably Mikans based on how ugly they are. Don't decide that based on ugliness! Huh... They're not Hyoko's footprints? That's strange. 
The footprint I collected from your room matches these footprints perfectly. Collected? I never gave you permission to collect that, you nasty pedo! Plus, the footprints left in the sand were facing away from the beach house. Which means, when the owner of these footprints went inside the beach house, they used a different entrance. A different entrance? Are you talking about the door facing the road that Mahiru's body was leaning against? Are you saying, when that person went inside the beach house, the body hadn't appeared yet? The door was still accessible when they went in, and wasn't when they left. Which means something happened in between those two events. Isn't that right, Hyoko? Ah! I remember now! I remember when I went to the beach house! Hmm, so you finally decided to confess. I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, but going for walks in the morning is my daily routine. I've never heard of that daily routine before. And that's when I went to the beach house. I went there on my morning walk. I see. If you went there during your morning walk, that doesn't have anything to do with the case at all. Don't believe her so easily, dumbass. She's obviously lying. It's a lie? People who call other people liars are usually liars themselves. If you say I'm lying, prove it. Can you even prove that I'm lying? <laughs> There's no way a bunch of worthless idiots like you guys would be able to do that. Go to the beach house. But only during my morning walk. I didn't go any other time. Then you didn't meet at the beach house? <laughs> Obviously not. Saying I met up with her when I never even saw her? Is this a panel of idiots? I did go to the beach house. Only during my morning walk! No, that's wrong! Only during your morning walk, huh? Will you still claim that after you take a look at this letter? See, so Hiyoko was able to arrange a meeting with Mahiru by exchanging letters with her. What is that letter? I'm serious, I don't know. Oh snap, I remember now. I totally saw you. Huh? Me and Hajime met up at the diner around 3 p.m. to go to the beach. I saw you about 30 minutes later, so it should have been around 3.30 p.m. I see. So if she met Mahiru at 2.30 p.m., killed her, then ran away afterward, I think 3.30 p.m. is a reasonable time for you to have witnessed Hyoko. You're wrong! You're totally wrong! Now that you mention it, you also passed by the diner Fuyuhiko. So you should have seen Hyoko too, right? No, I didn't. It's just a coincidence that I passed by the diner. I wasn't even paying attention to the beach house. I went straight back to my cottage after I saw you guys. I didn't see anyone during that time. 
For some reason, that sounds suspicious too. It's the truth. Deal with it. Just leave him alone. It'd be a waste of time to question him any further. Anyway, that letter in Kazuichi's testimony says it all. You were meeting up with Mahiru at the beach house. Seriously? I don't know! I didn't even write that letter! I, I'm telling the truth! I really, really don't know! <laughs> is she really crying? Or is she faking it? She's probably faking it! We can assume she summoned Mahiru with the intention of killing her all along. That's why she wrote a letter to let her know where to meet, so the others wouldn't find out. And then you went ahead to the beach house, hid yourself in a specific place, and waited for Mahiru. There's evidence for that too. place where Hiyoka was hiding. Are you talking about the closet? Yes, that's right. The gummy candy we found on the floor is the evidence. Hiyoko, your favorite candy is gummies, correct? What's a gummy? I've never eaten something like that before. <laughs> I have captured the true character of this mystery! Hyoko, who summoned Mahiru to the beach house, hid inside the closet like a familiar. When she saw her chance, she attacked her like an evil spirit and left the beach house like a swift wind. But Hyoko miscalculated that Mahiru's body would be blocking the door at that time. Because of that, she was only able to leave from the beachside door, and ended up leaving her footprints. <laughs> we have presented the proof! My four dark devas of destruction didn't even need to come out! It's a trap! This is obviously someone's trap! Who's someone? Whose trap is it? It must be that one person! You know, the one with the mask, maybe? The one with the mask? There was a suspicious mask at the beach house, right? Whoever was wearing that could be the real killer. You're the one who wore that mask and killed Mahiru, right? There's no way I'd wear such a childish mask. Is your brain fried or something? That is right. It cannot be Hyoko. That mask belongs to Sparkling Justice. Huh? Sparkling what now? That mask says it all! Sparkling Justice is hiding on this island! Which means, the legendary serial killer Sparkling Justice is the one who killed Mahiru! Why you? If you continue to say such foolish things, I shall tear you limb from limb. Don't blame Miss Sonia! It's just a difference between cultures! A uh, culture shock, you know? Yoko, why don't you just admit it already? You're being unreasonably stubborn! It's all in your heads! Oh, why can't you understand? I'm not the killer! I shall render my verdict upon this mystery's conclusion. Hiyoko is the sinner who killed Mahiru! Uh, I'm telling you, it's a trap! There's no doubt! You went to the beach house, right? Uh, um, that is... And weren't you also hiding in the closet? So that's when you dropped the gummy! No, that's wrong!
About that gummy, did Hyoko really drop it? The only one childish enough to eat gummies is that midget over there. You're a midget too, you know. You're the one who worries about never getting taller. It's true Hyoko likes to eat gummies, but she only eats a specific brand. The brand of gummies you eat only have strawberry, melon, grape, and orange flavors, right? Huh? But what about the lemon flavor? The... the gummy at the crime scene was yellow, so it obviously looked like it was lemon flavored. Huh? That gummy is yellow? And it's not mine! The ones I eat don't have any yellow gummies! What? That's right. None of the gummy bags in her cottage had any yellow ones. Then we can't assume Hiyoko is the one who dropped that yellow gummy. See? Didn't I tell you? It's definitely a trap! Uh, damn it! Who would set a trap like this? I'll get my revenge! I'm gonna bop you on the head with all my might! Hold on, you little bitch! You think you're in the clear just because of a little gummy? Don't be stupid! I'm not done backing you into a corner yet! We're not done with Hyoko yet! There's still a huge piece of evidence left! You're talking about the footprints near the beach house, right? It's true, that's an important piece of evidence. And we can thank Mahiru for it! What does that mean? Mahiru used her last ounce of strength and... No, that's wrong! Mahiru didn't block the door. Her death was instant. Instant death? According to my autopsy, yes, there's no doubt that Mahiru died instantly. If you keep making shit up, I'll fucking kill you! <gasps> I'm sorry! Ryuhiko, you cannot do that. Only a coward threatens women. I'm pretty sure her death was instant, too. I mean, her injury was only a single blow. That's why Mahiru isn't the one who blocked the door. Someone else used her body to block it. S someone else? The killer, of course. They're the one who blocked the door with Mahiru's body. That's why there were bloody drag marks left on the floor. But why did the killer block the door? Just ask Kyoko. She's the killer, after all. S seriously? That's not true! Let's assume Hiyoko is the killer. Wouldn't that mean she's also the one who dragged the body? If she handled the body that bloody, I think her clothes or skin would have been stained with blood. Huh? But when I saw her, she was... She was clean. I told you I wasn't the killer! Yay! With this, my innocence has been proven! I won't let you look down on me! We haven't decided that yet! Hey, Fuyuhiko. Why do you keep insisting that Hyoko is the killer? Shut up! I'm telling you, she's the killer! That little bitch is definitely the killer! If Mahiru didn't block the door, then Hiyoko did it! She killed Mahiru and blocked the door with her body! Hiyoko is the only killer I can think of! If Hiyoko moved the body, then she should be covered in blood! So what, dumbass? There's a shower room inside the beach! After she moved the body, she just washed it off in the shower! Allow me to cut through those words! 
Washing it off in the shower is impossible, because the shower in the beach house was out of order. Out of order? I'm terribly sorry. I haven't had any time to actually repair it. Then... Maybe she took her clothes off to move the body, and when she was done, she put them back on! Are you saying I did something that perverted? I see! Listen to me, Fuyuhiko. Hyoko mentioned this before. Which means, Hyoko can't change by herself. It's impossible for her to put on and take off her clothes. What? Oh yeah, she couldn't even tie her sash on her own. That's why she couldn't take a bath and smell bad. I... I didn't smell. And it only smelled a little. Oh, wasn't changing inside the beach house prohibited in the first place? Yes, if you broke the rules, I'm pretty sure Monokuma wouldn't have kept quiet. Damn right! I'm such a stickler for the rules that even Safari Park Rangers want nothing to do with me! If she didn't change her clothes, then what did Hyoko do with the blood that got on her? Like I've been saying, the blood wasn't on me in the first place, because I never touched Mahiro's body! Hey, if you think about it the other way around, does that mean whoever was covered in blood is suspicious? Cause if so, I believe Akane was soaked with blood when we all met up to go to the beach. Didn't I tell you that was cause I got beat up by Coach Nekomaru? I can attest to that. If I hadn't gotten that rough with her, she never would have backed down. Doubt me of all people. You got some nerve. All right, I'll bend your body in half so you're stuck in a bowing position for the rest of your life. That actually sounds pretty cool. The hell it does. Hey, more importantly, I'm okay now, right? It's okay. That I'm not the killer? Yeah, seems like it. See? I already told you. There's no way I'd kill Mahiru. Cause Mahiru taught me how to wear a kimono, and she was very, very kind. There's no way I would kill a nice person like her! Why wouldn't you believe me earlier? You guys are stupid! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Hyoko... Please don't cry. Everything is fine now, right? Shut the hell up, pig barf! I hope you get a hangnail and die! <laughs> and I'm sorry for being pig barf! Hey, Hiyoko. Now that our suspicions have been addressed, can you tell us the truth? Huh? Even though you're not the killer, you still went to the beach house, right? Like I said, it was a trap! Yeah, I got that already, so... Can you give us the details about that trap? I would like to know too! It might lead to some kind of clue! Fine. You want me to talk, huh? Um, earlier this morning, Mahiru was the one who came up to me. She asked if we could meet up later. Huh? But didn't you say earlier? So that was a lie? Cuz I thought it'd be doubted if I admitted it. So I figured it was better not to say anything. 
So, what was your answer to Mahiru's invitation? I told her it was fine. I mean, I didn't have a reason to say no. Unlike everyone else here, Mahiru was someone I wasn't embarrassed to be seen with. You always have to say something snide. At the time, we were supposed to meet around 2 p.m., but... Around noon, there was a letter inside my mailbox. A letter? Yeah, this one! letter and went to the beach house at that time. I can prove it with this. This letter. Doesn't it look like its contents are different from the letter Mahiro had? Mahiru's letter said to meet at 2.30 p.m., but in Hyoko's letter... Whoa! The meeting times are off! It's also strange that both letters wanted to change their meeting spot to the beach house. It would be plausible if one of them said it, but for both letters to say the same thing? Hyoko, since you wrote it, what do you think? Like I said, I never wrote the letter! How many times do I have to tell you? I see! The killer must have forged both letters. The killer forged them so they could manipulate their actions. Yeah, that's how we should think about it. That seems very likely. In fact, if you compare both letters... Confirmed! Just as I assumed, the handwriting is the same. The content of the letters matches too. Like this part. I was going to tell you in person. But I couldn't find you, so I put this in your mailbox. This part? It seems there's someone who wants to interfere with our meeting. And this part? Let's keep it a secret. Until then, let's try not to see each other for a while. The, the killer forged both of those letters! In doing so, they were able to control Hyoko and Mahiru to do their bidding, like a netherworld puppeteer. So they completely tricked me, and then... Mahiru's killer! <laughs> How mean! Give me back Mahiru! Really? This is really terrible. I've offered to help so many times, but the killer this time didn't discuss their plan with me at all. It's all my fault. I'm so ashamed of being unreliable. Here we go again. Once we let our guard down, this happens. We can just lightly punch him to death later. So based on what the letter said, you went to the beach house at 2 p.m., right, Hyoko? What's most important is what happened afterward. What on earth happened there? Why'd you fall asleep? It's not like I wanted to. I think...
think I was forced to get a whiff of some kind of medicine or something. <gasps> medicine? Th that medicine... Could it be? Did they get it from the drugstore? I thought that place seemed unsafe. They even have prescription medicines laying out in the open. If you were aware of that from the start, you should have done something about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. When I woke up, I was inside a small closet. And when I rushed out, I... I saw Mahiro's body! And that's why you ran out of the beach house in such a panic! I, I was scared. It was really, really scared. Really scared that I couldn't help, but... <laughs> the killer probably planned to frame Hyoko from the start. And for that reason, they summoned Hyoko before Mahiru, put her to sleep, and shoved her inside the closet. So their reason for blocking the door with Mahiru's body was to make Hiyoko leave her footprints as evidence. Everything was done to frame Hiyoko as the killer. That's horrible! I didn't do anything wrong, and I was framed by Mahiru's killer! Hiyoko, please do not cry. We believe you! Is it really okay to believe her so easily? She might be faking those tears, you know. This'll never end if you keep being so suspicious! Isn't that what a class trial is all about? The only way to survive is to be suspicious! This is where we go to thoroughly doubt each other! So if you believe in each other so easily, then there's definitely something wrong with you. You're wrong, Fuyuhiko. We aren't supposed to doubt each other here. We're supposed to work together. The class trial is where we cooperate with each other, work hard, and aim for victory. The killer and everyone else. Two hopes attempting to grasp the one true hope. Two hopes clashing with each other is poetry in motion! That... is what a class trial should be! Seriously, which side are you on? I'm on the side of the absolute hope that can overcome any despair. And I believe that absolute hope... exists at the point where two hopes clash. Your stance is neither white nor black, but gray. And you do not yearn for your life, or even for victory. Jeez, I wish he'd just side with the enemy already so I can believe what he's saying! Let's stop. Believing every little thing Nagito says is a waste of time. Yeah, we need to figure out who Mahiru's killer is! There should be a new clue contained in what Hyoko has told us. So? Let us believe Yoko's words and discuss it once again with everyone. Yup, yup! The debate proceeds when you assume you can believe each other. Good job! That's the right way! That's the splendid power of teamwork! Hey! What do you think of that, Monokuma? I'm not gonna let you have the outcome you want! Hey. <sighs> hey. Whoa, whoa. He's sleeping. Dumbasses. You bastards don't know anything. If you're stupid enough to trust each other, the only thing waiting for you is the bitter truth.
You say Nanu in German when you're surprised. Um... is throbbing like crazy right now. To think that the person who killed the wonderful Mahiru Kwezumi is in this room. Impossible! Impossible! That's so impossible! There's no way I can believe that! Ugh! I can't do anything! How annoying! But I'm just gonna believe in everyone. That's the least I can do. Everyone do your best. Don't lose to yourselves. And don't forget to save regularly. Well, now that we've decided to believe Hyoko, now what? If the killer was luring Hyoko into a trap, then something that was used there might be a clue. Do you mean the letter? No, it was probably the gummy. Huh? Candy can be a clue? Hey, when you woke up, was the gummy already there? Uh, now that you mention it, I feel like it wasn't. Just as I thought. Just as you thought? If the killer planted evidence while Hyoko was there, she would have thrown it away if she found it. Which means... the gummy was placed inside the closet after Hyoko fled from the beach house? Killer returned to the scene of the crime? After I left? They wouldn't have to do something that troublesome as long as they hid somewhere within the beach house. That's impossible! There's nowhere to hide! I even glanced inside the shower room as I was running away, but there was nobody there! Then, does that mean the killer came back? Hmm... I wonder, at any rate, the solution to that problem is connected to what really happened. That's what I think. It's all coming together! Do you think the killer might have been hiding? You spent all that time thinking just to say something so pointless! How disappointing! Didn't I 
can't just say there was nowhere to hide. Do I have to explain it in another language so you can understand? Her personality got a hell of a lot more forceful once she stopped being a suspect. No, there should have been a place for them to hide. A place you didn't look, Hyoko. What are you saying? Stop being annoying or I'm gonna make Akane bop you on the head and shut you up for good! killer was probably hiding in the closet. The closet? That's where I was locked up! After you woke up, you said you rushed out of there, right? Then you probably didn't look inside the closet very carefully. But could two people even hide in such a small place? And without Hyoko knowing? That's why the killer made sure to arrange a hiding place. the surfboard case in the closet. I'm pretty sure they could have hidden in there. Huh? Inside the surfboard case? But the shelf it was on. It was pretty messy, don't you think? Two surfboards were stacked on the top shelf. And there were surfboards that weren't even in a case. The killer probably did that on purpose to secure a hiding place. Because we haven't been on this island that long, so the closet shouldn't have been that messy, I think. Then, the killer was close to me during that time? Yeah, they were quietly holding their breath and hiding very close to you. It's kind of like, in for a penny, in for a pound, so to speak. Don't you mean... It's always darkest under the lighthouse. <laughs> I shouldn't say things I don't understand, like, so to speak. A anyway, the killer hid silently, and after making sure Hyoko left, they finally left the surfboard case. I agree with that as well. Seriously, nobody asked what you think. There's no way the killer would leave Hyoko by herself if they were trying to frame her. If Hyoko was left alone and ruined the evidence the killer had planted, it would have messed up their plan. Instead, it makes more sense to think that the killer was hiding in the beach house, watching Hyoko. Saying whatever you want, even if we didn't ask. All right. If you don't want to friggin' get punched, just stand still and let me punch ya! <laughs> oh, you shut up. Then... Grit your teeth! Sorry, Akane. It's not like that. Hey, Monokuma. Can I ask you about something that seems strange to me? I believe Prince Shotoku was from the future. A man from the future is always directing the flow of history. I'll listen to your story about men from the future some other time. As I recall, the body discovery announcement is made when three or more people discover a body, right? Is the killer also included? Among those three or more people? Yeah, that's true, but, uh, well, something like that is basically what it's supposed to be. You don't sound very articulate. Jeez! You're pretty annoying for noticing something like that! I know it sounds like an excuse, but the body discovery announcement isn't supposed to be used for deduction. 
it's intended to create a fair trial. It's supposed to let everyone know a body has been found. So you're saying it's unfortunate that I used it for deduction? I understand your excuse, but... Depending on who actually found the body, it's possible that your three or more people rule could be deadly. Well, as long as I keep things ambiguous, I can respond to situations with some flexibility. Flexibility, huh? So what about this time? Is it three people including the killer or not? Jeez, fine, fine! You want me to say it? It doesn't include the killer this time, okay? All done! Which means... Three people other than the killer discovered Mahiru's body. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I just thought it was somewhat strange. More importantly, let's get back to our original topic. You're the one who went on a tangent! Uh, um, we were just saying the killer was hiding in the surfboard case, right? And after Hyoko ran away, the killer got to enjoy the simple life of destroying evidence. However, before we proceed any further, there's something we have to make clear. The killer blocked the roadside door with Mahiru's body before Hyoko ran away. But what about the blood? Now that you mention it, that mystery hasn't been solved yet. It's going to be alright. If you guys have come this far, I'm sure you can discover that answer too. Now, let's start the argument, shall we? What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply washed it off. They couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it off would have been impossible. They didn't have to use the shower. Oh, what about the wetsuits in the closet? Maybe they wore one when they moved the body. If they used something other than the shower... What did they do with the bloody wetsuit? They cut it up and flush! As someone who flushes their shit every morning, I can declare! It would definitely clog the toilet! Maybe it's the other way around? Perhaps someone other than the killer moved the body? Maybe they were able to wash it off. What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply washed it off. They couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it off would have been impossible. No, that's wrong! If they just needed to wash off the blood, they didn't necessarily have to use the shower. They could have just as easily used something else. Something other than the shower. <laughs> like what? I see! The drinks inside the refrigerator. Couldn't the killer have used those to wash off the blood? I've seen through it. In theory, but that's impossible. But why? Try to remember the refrigerator carefully, and then you will understand. That there's no possible way the drinks in the refrigerator were used. It's true there were drinks in the beach house with however. Try one bottle, it wouldn't be enough to wash off the blood. I can't back down! We can't assume they used just one drink. They could have used a bunch of them to wash it off. <laughs> Didn't I say it was impossible? There were no water bottles in the refrigerator. Allow me to cut through those words! Oh, 
There were water bottles inside the refrigerator. How many times do I have to tell you? There were no water bottles in there whatsoever. That was after the incident, right? But before the incident, there were water bottles in the fridge. And the killer took all of those water bottles and used them to wash the blood off their body. So you're saying the water bottles were gone? Because they were all used? That's a logical fallacy. It's not a fallacy. There should have been evidence inside the trash can. Evidence like a lot of thrown away plastic water bottles. Isn't that right, Chiaki? Oh, you're right. These bottles look like they may have been filled with water. Well, now that you mention it... When I went to the beach house a few days ago, I feel like I drank one of those plastic water bottles. Huh? You should have said so sooner! Then, the plastic water bottles were used in place of the shower. Dousing your body with lots of water bottles is such a simple and easy to understand explanation! It seems you've realized who the killer is. Hmm? See? Just as I thought. <sighs> Hold on. You... You know who the killer is? <laughs> is that... true? Let me ask. Who might that be? The only one! Pekko, is it you? Hey! What are you being quiet for? They're accusing you of being the killer! Then I should ask you this. Why do you believe I'm the killer? I remember when we were all meeting up to go to the beach. Your appearance when you came to the diner. The killer really did wash the blood off with water bottles. They'd have to drench their entire body. But there were no towels in the beach house, and it would have taken a while for the water to fully air dry. So you said you went swimming so you'd have a cover story. Don't just stay silent! Say something! Hold on, you bastard! You saw her at the diner! You never saw her near the beach house, right? So maybe she really was swimming! No one even saw her swimming. No. I saw her. Huh? Uh, after I ran into you bastards at the diner, I crossed paths with her on my way home. So, so there's no doubt she would have arrived at the diner from the opposite direction of the beach house. Hold on, that's strange. Didn't you just say this earlier? You told me you didn't see anyone. Don't try to tell me you forgot about that. Not so fast! It's too soon to decide she's a killer! We haven't established how the killer was able to leave the beach house! Now that you mention it, you're right! The roadside door was blocked! And if it's impossible to leave from the beachside without leaving footprints... 
Then how the fuck did the killer escape? Um, why are you all fired up, Fuyuhiko? You're not the suspect. Pekko is. Who cares about that? Answer me! If you have an explanation, then show me what you got! We might have an answer. Huh? Do you really? This mystery seems unsolvable. Well, if Pekko is the killer, then I might just have an answer to that mystery. I see. Then let's hear this alleged method of escaping the beach house. First, let's establish how the killer escaped. I see! If the roadside and beachside doors aren't an option, the only other thing I can think of is... Well, nothing really. Except that small window in the shower room. <laughs> Don't you know how high that window is? There's no way Pekko could have reached it. B but what if, for instance, she got help from someone? She might have reached it by riding someone's shoulders, but then that person would have been left behind. Is it possible an object was used? A rope, for instance? And what happened to the rope after they used it? And don't say something stupid like they threw it outside! Of course not! That would violate the school trip rule! Littering is prohibited! Even if it might be evidence, rules are still rules. You see? There's no way they'd be able to escape from that window! No, they just have to use an object. Chiaki! Don't fall asleep on us! We just said they couldn't use an object! You did? I thought you were saying they couldn't dispose of an object. I see! You don't have to throw it away if you can just hide it somewhere on your body. Huh? Pekka was wearing a swimsuit, remember? Where would she even hide an object? And if you say she hid it in her special place, I'll stab you in yours! No! Please don't be violent! Echo, you carry that bamboo sword on your back at all times, right? If I recall correctly, you had it then too. Despite the fact that you had a swimsuit on, you were still wearing your bamboo sword. Are you saying she used that bamboo sword to escape through the window? Yeah, Pekko used that bamboo sword as a step stool and escaped out the window. A uh, sword as a step stool? You see? I knew it! I knew it was a ninja! Didn't I tell ya? A ninja could have climbed that easily! Ninjas know a climbing trick where they lean their sword against a wall and use the handguard as a step stool. Whoa! Just like a Japanese ninja! 
Miss Sonia, ninjas only exist in Japan. Well, it is a bamboo sword, but I'm sure a slender girl like Pekko could easily use it to climb. Well, Pekko, do you have anything to say? Hold on a sec, you bastard! You're saying she used her sword as a step stool and went out the fucking window? Then what about the sword? It would have been left in the shower room and she wouldn't have been able to recover it, dumbass! F Fuyuhiko, why do you even care? Shut up! Just shut the fuck up and answer me! If you have an answer, then fucking give it to me! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left behind! Got proof, you bastard? That's obviously impossible! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! Got proof, you bastard! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! Got proof, you bastard! That's obviously impossible! Bastard! Got proof, you bastard! I'll sell your fucking organs! You're pissing me off! You're pissing me off! Bastard! If she used the bamboo sword as a step st This is the end! If she used her bamboo sword as a step stool, she could have recovered it with her sword back. When she leaned her sword against the wall to use as a step stool, she tied her sword back to it. And after she climbed up to the window, as long as she hauled the bag up toward her, she would have been able to recover her bamboo sword. I see. Not just the bamboo sword, but even the sword bag, too. She used them both to escape. Hakane said she's like a ninja, but it's nothing as silly as that. Simply put, only Pekko could have performed this feat. An escape plan befitting of the ultimate swordswoman. Even so, how disappointing. If you'd only let me work with you, it would have been an even greater plan. No, oh, you just back off. Uh, um, is it true? Did you really kill Monkey Doo? Uh, ho hold on! You're just making assumptions. You, you don't have any proof. I won't accept this unless there's proof. Got it, you bastard. It's fine. I said it's fine. Saying anything more would just be an exercise in futility. Among flowers, the cherry blossom. Among men, the samurai. I commend your decisiveness, at least. Very well. If you admit it, this ends now. Let's cast our votes. Agreed. Hurry up and vote. Uh, hold on. Let me confirm one thing first. Can it wait until after the voting? This is important, and it relates to the voting. It's about Pekko's motive. My motive? In the end, you had no connection to the events depicted in Twilight Syndrome murder case, right? Then, why did you kill Mahiru? Hmm, so it's about that. Let's see. If I must answer that question, I must say... It was for the sake of justice. 
Justice? In order to... protect the justice of this world. I do not sully my hands to satisfy personal grudges. There is only one reason I kill. For the sake of protecting justice. Y you What are you saying? Justice is what makes humans human. It's a virtue that human beings should be proud of. Justice is the eternal sun, and the enduring moon, the protective father, and the smiling mother. Uh, hello! Earth to Pecco! If justice ever disappeared from this world, the world would immediately freeze, and people's smiles would vanish. I will not allow that! It's, it's fine, just stop it! Justice must always be there to guide us, to shine bright above our heads. I'm telling you to stop it! So I must fight. I must continue to fight to protect justice. This is... could she be? As the light of justice shines upon my mask, I expose the hearts of malevolent evil. Justice complete! The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. That would be me. Sparkling justice! Now then, let's execute justice! What? What the fuck? Pego, what are you doing? I am Sparkling Justice. In the name of Sparkling Shining Justice, I have come to deliver justice. What's going on? What's this? Chill. Pego finally snapped. Everyone, please be careful. Sparkling Justice is a serial killer who claims to be an ally of justice. Clad in her various hero masks, she is a serial killer who exclusively targets other criminals. She is supposed to be... but... Huh? An ally of justice? So that's why you're wearing a mask! This mask is the dividing line. Just like various idols, the sun is revered because it lies just beyond your grasp. Justice should also be the same. I don't get it, but... but this is becoming really crazy! This is turning out to be a surprising turn of events! Hey! Hey! Now's not the time for you to be sleeping! Take a look! It's a killer! <sighs> this again? Huh? Sleep talking? So what's your answer to my previous question? Why did you kill Mahiru? This world must always be bathed in the light of justice. I must not allow even one shadow. Evil must be eliminated immediately. No matter what, I must not overlook evil. Evil? Are you saying Mahiru is... If you knew about that incident, then you must have played the game. Am I right? And because of that, I was able to find the killer's accomplice hiding on this island like a sewer rat. Then... the reason you killed Mahiru was... To protect justice, of course. In order to protect justice, I have become its merciless sword. And... executed justice. Holy crap! She's such a stereotypical psychopath! <laughs> She's so gross! 
Pecco, is this your true identity? My true identity? <laughs> I have already forgotten who I am. It just shows my determination. My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. I'm willing to become anybody to shower this world with justice. <laughs> Oh, I can't stand this anymore! Let's just end this farce already! Let's go over this incident one more time and then let's end this. Here's everything that happened in this case! The incident began this morning, when Mahiru spoke to Hyoko. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome Murder Case, the video game provided to us as the motive. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. Kyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation, and used their promise to devise a specific murder plan. By preparing a specific item, they planned to manipulate the two's actions. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyoko. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. By providing different times, the killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Hyoko totally trusted that letter, showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said. And was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet. So they could frame her as the killer later. At 2.30 p.m., Mahiru arrived at the beach house. She was completely unaware that she had been targeted for murder. Approaching her from behind, the killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific weapon. The metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. The bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head, and with that, she took her last breath. According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly, so she probably never knew who killed her. With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing Mahiru, and began to tamper with the crime scene. They dragged Mahiru's body so that it blocked the door leading to the road. Also, the mask found at the scene of the crime was something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is, it's something similar to a calling card. 
That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on them. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order, so they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house refrigerator. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events had happened. In place of showering, they washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Littering is against the rules, and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the closet Hyoko was in. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of the closet. I mean, she made plans to see Mahiru, who lay dead right in front of her. From the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect, Hyoko fled from the beach house. Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame her. After Hyoko left, the killer finally came out of the surfboard case and placed a gummy that they brought with them to shift our suspicion toward Hyoko. Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Finally, the killer began preparing to escape from the beach house. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand, so they escaped the beach house using a different route. The small window in the shower room. However, that window is rather high up and can't be reached easily which is why the killer used the bamboo sword they always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, and used the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. As long as they're able to reach the window, all they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. But their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as an excuse. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Peko Peko Yama? I see. And what of it? She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. What are you saying? You killed Mahiru! Wrong! I punished evil in the name of justice! That's no reason to condemn me! Whatever! Let's hurry up and vote so we can freaking kill this weird crazy bitch! There's no way you can kill me. Justice can never be killed. You should all know that as well. 
What are you saying? To protect what's most important to you, you must be prepared to throw away something equally important. Understand? I don't get it! I don't get it at all! Then I shall be direct. Justice must carry on! In order to keep justice, to keep me alive, you all must give up your lives. Uh, are you serious? It's not serious. It's justice! If I fall here, who will combat the evils of this world? Now, follow your hearts of justice that reside within you all, and save my life to protect Justice! Hurry and carry on justice! Give me a break! Who's gonna die for you? If we let Pecco go, we're all gonna get killed! For the sake of grand justice, a few sacrifices are unavoidable. A, a, a few sacrifices? That's... Don't worry. The justice that you give your life to protect will never go to waste. her anymore! Let's vote already and execute her! Um, however, b before we do that... Monokuma, the vote! Hurry up and let us vote already! <sighs> I'm awake! Ah, he finally woke up! I've heard your story! Well, I wasn't listening, but who cares? Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote! Who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? <laughs> Such heart-pounding excitement! Continue our discussion? Continue our discussion? But isn't the voting over? Yes, but I cannot help but feel strange. Something about this is definitely strange. Strange? What do you mean? There's no doubt that Pekko is the killer. That is true, however. As a serial killer enthusiast, you're wondering if Petko is really sparkling justice, am I right? Huh? Hey, Miss Sonia isn't a serial killer enthusiast. She just has a little more passion about them than most. That makes her an enthusiast! Honestly, it felt strange to me too. I mean... There's a distinct difference between what we know about sparkling justice and Petko, right? Distinct difference? You know, Sonia describes sparkling justice like this. Justice complete! The center of justice that is pierced by justice! The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky! That would be me! Sparkling justice! what Sonia said. The article was written in their native language, so I tried to translate it. If she had it translated, that means it wasn't written in English, right? Huh? Yes, the magazine.
magazine I read was written in Spanish. So, Sparkling Justice's catchphrase was no doubt written in Spanish as well. Which means the journalist and Sparkling Justice are both... From Spain? What?! Echo, you're not sparkling justice. There's no way that's possible. Or, if you insist that you're sparkling justice, can you try saying that catchphrase in Spanish? Would you be able to do that? Hmm. It appears that the time has come for this mask to come off. However, that's perfectly fine. It's no longer necessary. And... Even if you find out now, it's too late for you all to do anything about it. My duty... has already been finished. My duty as a tool... has already been completed in full. Uh-huh? Looks like... She's back to normal? That mask has fulfilled its purpose, just as I have. What do you mean? Fulfilled its purpose? Too late? What are you getting at? Now that you've already cast your votes, is what it means. Hey! Be clearer! We're asking you what your purpose was! I have no purpose. I am just a mere tool. Tool? What do you mean? She called herself a tool. Which means someone else used her then? <laughs> of course. A tool cannot do anything on its own. I see. I finally understand. Well, I did have a sneaking suspicion all along. What do you mean? I mean, besides Pekko and Hyoko, someone else was also at the beach house. Someone else? There is proof that establishes that fact. Try to remember it. I see! Are you talking about the body discovery announcement? Yep, that's right. I mean, didn't Monokuma say so earlier? That announcement is made when at least three people discover a body. And in this particular case, the killer, Pekko, is not one of those three. If that's the case, it would mean only Hyoko and Kazuichi discovered the body, but... I see. That leaves us one person short. So that means there was one more person in the beach house! Plus... The fact that Monokuma tried to hide that truth from us by being flexible with his own rules. That's such a vital clue that it could alter the outcome of the trial. Like an accomplice, for example. No. That's not it. Huh? Am I wrong? Yes. From your basic way of thinking about it, you are wrong. Didn't I tell you? I'm just a tool. That means I'm just a simple tool to be used by that person. Therefore, that person would have the strongest motive out of anybody else here, right? You're the only one! Is it Fuyuhiko? I see. Now I finally see the connection. The connection between the motive and the incident. 
But even if it's the motive, it's just a game, right? There's no reason to believe it's even true. Would you call a game like that a strong motive? I can prove it with this! I didn't think it was necessary to confirm it if it didn't have anything to do with Mahiru's murder, but... There's no doubt that game is based on actual events. That much is clear if you saw the ending prize. The photos awarded for beating the game are not actual in-game screenshots. They're all actual photos, with the surrounding scenery cropped out. You knew all along, Fuyuhiko, didn't you? You knew whether or not the first victim in the game was actually your little sister, right? Because whoever beat the game first and received the ending prize... It was the envelope, right? The person who received the ending prize. It was you, wasn't it? If you were shown a photograph of your sister's dead body, you'd have no choice but to believe it. Even so, you wanted to deny the truth. That's why you sent those photos to Mahiru to confirm it. Hey! Why are we talking about Fuyuhiko? Who cares? Because... Echo is the killer, right? But... we already voted! That's why I told you. You're all too late. As I said before, I exist as nothing more than a tool. I had no motive for killing Mahiru. No reason to kill. Not even the will to kill. I was simply used as a tool. As long as I am a tool, I cannot defy my orders. Hey! What's going on? Can anyone give me a simpler explanation? It means... I'm not the killer. The true killer, who used me as their weapon to kill Mahiru Koizumi, was Fuyuhiko Kuzuryu. What? What the hell?! I see. That's what you were aiming for all along. No, I have no aim, but my young master does. My young master planned this from the start. Young master? That is the truth of this case. I'm sure you realize it by now, but it's too late. You cannot undo the vote. That's a problem. If Peko's allegation holds up, that means our vote was incorrect. In that case, the person who gets to live is... Just... me? That's nuts! No matter how you look at it, that's completely insane! H how would Peko be a tool in the first place? Peko is a legitimate human being! That's not for you to decide. It's for Monokuma. The votes have been cast. All we can do now is wait and see what Monokuma decides. What the hell? Hmm, I'm in a bind. And what a bind it is. I guess for now, let's take a quick recess. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hmm. <laughs> 
Sorry. Hey! Don't know. Hey. Yeah. Um. No. Nothing but a tool. What? <laughs> if my young master is attacked, I must defend him as his shield. If he intends to kill, I must be his sword. That is my only reason for living. Before I am human, I am my young master's tool, first and foremost. Until this body of mine can no longer move, I shall fulfill my duty until the very end. That is... <sighs> Nothing. You fiend? No. I am nothing but a tool. Damn it. Damn it. with me! Are you serious? 
serious? Hey. What the? And so... That is... up What are you saying? Jeez. Young master, I am finished. What? Quiet. Yes, indeed.
That's obviously wrong! No. This is troubling! I see. Great! Wrong. Now then! Huh? Hey! <laughs> what? Hold on! What? Jeez. Hey. Huh? Um... Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I... Young Master. I... Hey. <laughs> Damn it! Young master, I am finished. He... you... What the hell did you do? You already know, right? What's going to happen? After you kill someone? I did it because I know. There is no way I can let that happen to you. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Pekka. Do you remember what I told you when we first arrived on this island? Our professional relationship doesn't exist on this island. We're just fellow high school students now. You need to run. Got it? Just let me take the fall so you can get away. Young master, that is impossible. Shh. Shut up! 
I'm ordering you not to worry about me. There is no way I cannot worry about you. I am my young master's tool. A tool to protect my young master without an owner. A tool serves no purpose. God damn it, we are done with that crap! Why won't you listen to what I'm saying? Regardless, I will not flee. Besides, I'm fairly certain they'll discover the truth soon enough. <laughs> then... why did you... I have a plan. Huh? A plan? Please do not worry. I promise I will keep my young master alive and return him safely home. You... you idiot. What do you intend to do? I intend to fulfill my duty as your tool. Now please, go! Hyoko will be waking up soon. After you leave, I must block the door to the road with Mahiru's body. Hurry! Damn it. You better run away, got it? Just forget about me! Forget about the Kuzuryu clan! You better escape! Sorry. Young Master! I'm a disgrace. Young Master! Ah. Oh! Too bad! Jeez. Sorry. <sighs> huh? Young Master! <laughs> what? Even so, I wanted you to escape. Pekko. I am terribly sorry. Goodbye. And please do not cause a senseless killing such as this ever again. <laughs> I will never feel despair. Oh, cool!
Young master for you, Hiko. So... I want you to remember. prepared a very special punishment! I... I never needed... a tool. So... You didn't... need to become a tool. Let's give it everything we've got! You just... You just needed to be yourself. I never wanted a tool. I just wanted you. Only you. Young master? Why? Why couldn't you understand? We've always been together ever since we were kids! Let's go! It's punishment time! Please, Echo. Don't go! I need you! Don't leave me! Young master? Young master? Such a waste. Isn't that right?
Hmm. Listen carefully. Is he gonna be okay? Do something! Hey! You need to save him! Hey! Uh, I'm trying! But his blood, he won't stop bleeding out! His pulse is getting weaker! Can't you... Can't you do anything about it? God damn it! Hmm... You're so stupid! Stupid brother! I don't believe it! What the heck? That's wrong! Huh? Hey, hey! Fine, fine. So... Like... Just leave the rest to me, Dr. Killgood! Dr. Killgood, you've already killed your patients! We've got to get this patient to the Monokuma Hospital ER and get him under 24-hour observation stat! So, I'll see you later! However... Fall, my tears.
You guys can see it, right? You can see this countdown too? Four people are already gone! We took our time preparing the hope fragments, but now we're no longer able to gather them! Honestly, I'm not so sure anymore. Whether it's better if we let them leave this island, or if we shouldn't let them escape. For those kids, which option is hope, and which is despair? But... I guess there's no time to hesitate. If this countdown reaches zero... That guy will probably take over our plan's final stage as well. What lies beyond that is the foul resurrection of the ultimate despair. And the continuation of the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Th that cannot be allowed. We must prevent that by any means necessary. Even if we have to pay the ultimate price, I will definitely prevent it by any means. Everything is for the sake of a future filled with hope. Bye.